Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Brie. I have no social life and I read a lot of books. In this video today, I'm gonna go through all of the duologies, trilogies, and series in the fantasy genre that I have read in like the last one to two years and tell you whether or not I recommend them. I'm also gonna plan to do a part two of this video where I go through the same thing in the horror and thriller genre and I'm really excited for that. So if that's something that interests you, be sure to stay tuned for that and let's dive right in. Starting out with one of my all-time favorites, we have the Shepherd King duology. This is One Dark Window and Two Twisted Crowns. These are two of my all-time favorite books. I absolutely love them. I would say that they're adult romanticy. And the magic system within these books is so unique and the romance is so good even though it's more of like a side plot. In this kingdom you have two different types of magic. So the first kind comes from providence cards which each card has a different ability that it grants the holder and each card also comes with consequences if the holder of the card uses them too long or too often. These cards are pretty much held by the king and his immediate family and the people that are in power. The second type of magic comes along with a sickness and this can affect anyone but it's something that you're not allowed to have. The magical ability that it gives you can vary for anyone but basically if you are caught having the magic then you are going to be sentenced to death. So in the book we follow the main character Elspeth. She has the magic but she has spent her whole life hiding it and she's doing the best that she can to blend in. The best thing about this whole series is what her magic causes her to have which is a monster who lives inside of her head. She refers to him as the nightmare. He is scary, he is intimidating, but he is also helpful. He is very witty, they banter back and forth, and he is like the best character ever. He makes this book so fun and entertaining. It's just so good, it's worth all the hype. So do I recommend it? Absolutely yes. Next up, also in the romanticy genre, is Trial of the Sun Queen and Rule of the Aurora King. These books I love because I felt like the story was equally plot driven and character driven and romance driven. Like it was very equally divided within both of these books. In this story you follow the female main character whose name is Lore. Lore and her closest loved ones are pretty much trapped in a prison where they're heavily guarded and they didn't do anything wrong. They just were thrown in there. So Lore really wants to get her revenge. She's pretty much a rebellious spirit. She's always getting into trouble and she's always finding herself um, being thrown into like confinement. One day when she is stuck in this isolation, she unexpectedly is rescued and taken away to like a different kingdom kind of, where she's given the opportunity to compete in a competition of trials for the place of the Sun Queen. It's very clear from the beginning that Lore does not belong there. She's like the black sheep, she's the odd one out, and she does the best that she can to fit in even though she's surrounded by all of these rich people that obviously come from money and royalty and she is just basically from the slums. So you follow her journey. I will say that the tension and build up in this book is so good. And then in the second book, everything picks up. The romance, the plot, the spiciness, and it's just such a good um, series. And I think book three is scheduled to come out in May or July, the summer sometime. I'm not sure. But do I recommend these? Definitely. Next we have For the Wolf and For the Throne by Hannah Witten. And I am very on the fence with these books, I'll be honest. So if you're unfamiliar, this is like a dark fantasy slash romanticy retelling of Little Red Riding Hood and the Wolf. I will say so many positive things about this book. The story was so well done. The atmosphere was so good. This is one of the most atmospheric books I have ever read and I loved the characters. I thought so many things about this book were well done and it's gorgeous as well. However, I felt like this book really had a lot of repetitiveness and for that reason it felt like it dragged on and was just a little bit too long. It did take me quite a while to read it even though I did really enjoy the story. I'm pretty sure I still gave it like four stars I want to say. Maybe even a little bit more, I can't remember. When you move on to book two, I felt the exact same. It was very good. The character development was there. It was really great. The storyline progressed and came to a close in a very good way. 
Not that I'm an expert on this stuff, but at the same time, I still felt like this one was a little bit also long and repetitive. So overall, when it comes to do I recommend this series, I would say it's probably not one that I would be jumping to recommend, but if you do enjoy a slower read and this sounds like something that you might enjoy, then definitely go for it. Moving on to two of my all-time favorite trilogies, and these are both super similar vibes to each other, but I would say one is YA and one is more the adult version. Let's start out with the Fable trilogy. So this is Fable, Namesake, which is book two, and then Saint, which is book three, but it's also set up to be a prequel. Fable book one is super atmospheric. So it takes place in the seas, it takes place on ships, it takes place on outer lying islands and within like trading ports. In the story, Fable is the daughter of the most infamous and powerful traitor within the Narrows, which is the world that the book takes place in. When Fable was just a young girl after her mom had passed away, her dad had taken her to one of the islands, dropped her off there, and basically told her, when you're old enough and can fend for yourself, come find me. So now 17-year-old Fable is ready to go find her dad after surviving for these last handful of years, and so she sets out on her own journey to go and track him down. Throughout this whole process, she's trying to hide who she is and who her father is from everyone else, because if people find out, they might want to, like, use her to get to him. Like I said, this one was super atmospheric. It was really fun to just follow Fable's journey. And I felt like book two in Namesake, the story really picked up. And then Saint book three was the perfect prequel to kind of like bring the whole story together. I highly recommend the series. Moving on to the Daughter of the Pirate King series. This is the one that I would consider more of an adult version, not version of Fable, but like if you enjoyed Fable and are looking for something a little bit more intense, then this is where it's at. So in this world, which also takes place on the sea and on ships and at trading ports and little islands, this one is more focused on pirates. You follow the main character, Alosa, who is amazing. And she is the daughter of the most infamous pirate king. Everyone is scared of him. He rules everything around him. The majority of people work under him in some way or another, and he is feared by everyone. Did I say that already? So Alosa, his daughter, is given a task by him that she is to go and be captured by an enemy pirate ship, taken aboard their ship as a prisoner, in order to spy on them and hopefully search the ship and locate a missing piece of a map that her father believes they might have. So she sets out on this journey and she's just such a badass female main character. I love her character so much. She was trained by her dad and it shows in everything that she does. Her training was thorough, it was intense, and it was brutal. I loved this book so much. It's also a really short read, so if you're into that, definitely recommend this one. Next up, we have these two books. This is called the Color Theory series, and book three for this series is to release in May. These ones are so pretty. So this is like a young adult fantasy um, with kind of like an academia setting, and the magic system in these books is very unique. So with it being called the Color Theory series, you have a magic system where each person's magical ability is associated with a different color. So these kids are in a school to help learn and cultivate whichever type of magic they have. And you have like red magic, you have blue magic, but then you have yellow magic. And we find out that yellow magic has actually been banned because it is associated with mind control. I felt like this story also had elements of like dystopian in it as well because it was very like government centered on how they run things in this world and with this magic. So in the story you follow the main character whose name is Ava and she's just a student at the school trying to learn and grow her powers. When a person with yellow magic is said to have escaped their imprisonment and is now on the loose like around the school. So when Ava bumps into this yellow magic person outside of the school, instead of turning him in, she kind of becomes friends with him. Although she is weary of what he can do, she is also very curious and wants to know more. These books are also really short. I flew through this one 
And then book two was actually even shorter, but I felt like the storyline picked up even more in book two. I definitely recommend these. These were really fun, quick reads. Then we have Everless and Evermore by Sarah Holland. And this one was also really unique. It's just a two book duology. And if you're familiar with the movie In Time with Justin Timberlake, you'll be interested in this. So in this land, everything is measured and bought and earned with time. And that time is kind of like emmed into your blood. So for example, if you need to pay rent, you need to bleed four months worth of time in order to pay your rent. Now, of course, in this story, you have the two sides. You have the rich and the poor. The poor have hardly any time left and are struggling to get by. And the rich have all the time in the world and therefore all of the riches. So you follow the main character. Her name is Jules and she, of course, is in the poor side. And she takes an opportunity to travel to the kingdom where all of like the rich people are. And she takes a job there hoping to earn time so that she can return to her father and help replenish some of his time because he's running out. The cool thing about this story is that when Jules goes to the kingdom, she ends up discovering a ton of stuff about her personally and her family and her past that she was never told for specific reasons. And it just kind of unravels um, an entire story. I loved these books. I will say that I did enjoy book one a whole lot more than I enjoyed book two, um, which was kind of a little bit disappointing if I'm being honest, but I would still recommend the series, especially if it sounds like something that you would be into. Definitely give it a try. Then we have The Liar's Crown and The Stolen Throne. This is like a young adult romanticy series. And I have these really pretty copies that I got from Etsy. So I just love them so much. So this one is pretty unique. I felt like it was um, kind of like almost like a high fantasy. Like it had some heavy world building, but it was also very easy to understand and follow along. In the story, you have um, a handful of kingdoms. In this one specific kingdom, it is ruled by a queen. And this queen, in her generations, the queen always gives birth to twin girls, twin princesses. The princesses' roles are different. So twin number one, the firstborn, is set to be next in line to become queen. But the second born is set to live her life in secret so that she can only be a backup to the princess or the queen should anything happen to either one of them. Now, nobody in the kingdom knows this. They don't know that the queens infamously give birth to twins. They only think that there is just one, and this is why the other princess spends her life pretty much in secret. In the story, you have an evil king, and he has kind of like a personal vendetta against the queens of this kingdom, and so he is always like out to get them. And that's where the story unfolds. However, there is also a morally gray male main character in this that you will absolutely love. And then to kind of add to that, the intricate way that the morally gray male main character is like incorporated into the story is super unique and very well done. I definitely recommend this series. It's a lot of fun. This is another one that has a book three scheduled to come out at some point this year. I'm not sure exactly when though. Last but not least, I'm going to talk about the Wayward Children series by Shauna McGuire. Don't be intimidated when I say this, but this is a nine book series and I think it's going to be 10 total from what I hear. However, each of these books is super short. They are all just between 150 to 200 pages and that's it. I do have all of the books up there on my shelf, but I'm just going to talk about the first four. This is a young adult portal fantasy series. Basically what that means is that in the story there are children who as they're going about their daily lives they find doorways which are portals that take them to different worlds. The worlds that they travel to are completely unlike anything here in the regular world. They're kind of like cultivated to be like what that specific child needs and everything within these worlds runs completely different there. So in book one, you are introduced to a school for the wayward children. And in this school, it is where children who have found doorways and have returned to the, the normal world will come to learn how to kind of adapt back into regular life. When these kids go into these worlds, they're spending years of their lives there. So when they come back, it's kind of like an adjustment period. But the uniqueness of this whole series is 
just so different from anything else you'll ever read. One thing I love most about the series is that every other book works as a standalone. So for example, in book one, you're introduced to the school and all of the kids who are attending. In book two, you follow the journey of two of those kids and what it was like for them growing up and how they found their door and what the world they went to was like and how they made their return. Then when you move on to book three, here you're back at the school again and the story continues. Then when you move on to book four, it's another standalone. So you follow another one of the children in their childhood upbringing and the door they find and the world that they go to and it just continues on throughout the rest of the series. Book four is actually one of my favorite books of all time. The way that the author creates this unique and magical world that like works on a completely different system is so good. The story is also like tugs at your heartstrings big time and I it's just one of my favorite books of all time. So do I recommend this series? Absolutely yes, although I will say it's not for everybody, but what book is? So that's it for this video. Those are all of the series, the duologies, trilogies that I have read recently and loved. I will say that I love most of what I read if I'm reading something and I'm not enjoying it. I'm big on DNFing and I will just not continue to read the rest of the series or the rest of the book. So basically when it comes down to it, I do pretty much recommend all of these depending on what kind of reader you are. And like I said, I am going to plan on doing a part two for this video. I'm going to do thriller slash horror genre, and I'm really excited for that one. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and if you're interested, stay tuned for part two.